There she goes. Oh, there she goes. Now I'm here. You're living in a whole new world. Oh my God. We're alive. <laughs> I feel like I'm huffing, making a lot of I'm, noises in the microphone. I'm out of breath for not doing a single thing. Just watching you struggle. <laughs> you go, I'm sweating. I'm like, no, I am sweating. I'm running around. <laughs> it's literally the hot tea <laughs> and the fleas. I'm like, I feel like I just got a workout. No need for cardio today. No cardio for you. It's good. It's good. Um, we're just going into it, you guys. Morgan from Two Hot Takes is here. She's in town oh, in Minnesota. No. She's born and raised Minnesota. I don't know if all of you know that, but yeah. we're Minnesota fam. We met through our friend Kate, right? That's yeah. how we met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the first time we met was at her wedding, actually. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. Wait, because wait, you couldn't come to the batch, I don't think. No, I had like- You had to work or something. It was COVID related. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I know. Because I was like, I don't, did I remember meeting you there? No, no, I don't think we did. It was at that rehearsal dinner that she had- the night before her wedding and yes she kept I us remember. all out until like I swear to god it was like it three was and then we had to be up in her room the next day for hair and makeup I think by like seven. Oh yeah I remember that I was dying and then I almost missed the bus to the venue like what? I was like I was waiting I yeah I was bad I I think I took a nap or Jordan took a nap and we weren't paying attention to the time and then one of our phones was dead so we're like wait what time is it actually oh my god we, no no people were texting and we we were like what we're just going about our business I think I was taking my sweet time you know when you think you have like two hours to get ready yeah yeah no oh my gosh <laughs> so wild I know so I'm like oh my god I almost lost my privileges as a friend because I almost missed her wedding but anywho We were both recently engaged. So ah! how fitting, I know we're literally like, eh. how fitting would it be <laughs> to have an engagement episode right off the bat? I think that makes so much sense. I get so many DMs, people being like, so when's like, has the wedding planning started? Oh or like, my gosh. can you talk about the story again? Yeah. Or like all the things. Oh, I, I want to hear how you got engaged. Cause I haven't even, I didn't want to ask you in full until we were sitting and oh, recording. Oh my gosh. It was really, really good. Justin did a great job. Um, so we've, we'll have been together for five years Oh, come this that. yeah come oh this God. december so it's it's been a minute so when he first asked me to be his girlfriend i i initially said no i just like too really yeah i just like wasn't ready i i had been through like a really traumatic breakup oh sad before that no <laughs> how old do you wait um i was like 20 how old am I now? I was like 25. Yeah. The early twenties to the mid twenties. I yeah. feel like every breakup is traumatic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, when we broke up, I was like 22. I just graduated college. I think he broke up with me the week before I, I walked. Perfect time. It was, it was so great. Um, so I was like, just really nervous about jumping into a new relationship and I didn't really, I don't know. So I was like, no, no, like I just, I just need more time. So like three months later, we we end up taking amazing trips together, and I so I start fun. to realize I'm like, okay, no, like, yeah, he's he's really he's the one, like he's great, and so we have this like family vacation like spot up in Duluth we always go to, and because my mom wouldn't let my boyfriend sleep at the house, oh my god, so, at 25, yeah, so if we wanted to sleep in the same bed together, like we had to get a hotel, so we went to this place called Pier B, and we hung out with my brother that night, and. My brother kept saying, oh, yeah, this is Morgan's boyfriend and Morgan's boyfriend this and oh, Morgan's boyfriend's so great. Don't fuck this up, Morgan. Oh, the classic, the family like comments. I was getting hazed. And so I said to him, like when we got back into the room that night by ourselves, I was like, OK, I'll be your girlfriend now. And so I said yes to him there. And so Jeez. we went on a trip. We went to London. We went to Paris and I literally like every picture I would post, people would reply to me and they'd be like, did he propose yet? Oh my Are God. you engaged? Does this mean you're engaged? And I'm like, no, no, I would have said it. I think <laughs> I'm like, damn, you guys are giving me anxiety. <laughs> I literally like, I didn't think it would be on the trip anyway. So like I was, I was so happy on the trip. Like it didn't matter. And then we get back to Minnesota and three weeks before the trip, I was kind of getting weird vibes. Like everyone's finding a really convenient reason to be in Duluth. And that's not a convenient spot it's for us Minnesotans. No, it's a two hour drive from the cities. Yeah. None of my friends are from there. They all are from the cities. Like it was really convenient. 
And so I'm surprised they were telling you, by the way. Well, they had to find a reason to be there. Like fair. I need I need to meet your horses. I'm going to come up to Duluth and meet your horses. And I'm like, OK. And then Alejandra was like, wait, I want to come meet the horses. And I'm like, OK, one, if it would have been either of them, it would have been like, OK, cool. But the fact both of them. And then my dad was going to fly from L.A. to move his car. I'm like, mm. so I confronted my dad and I go, I think Justin's going to propose in Minnesota. And he's he's like, why? And I'm like, well, everyone's finding a reason to be there. And he's like, oh, I don't have to be there. So he finds a different thing. So we get back from Paris and we're driving up to Duluth and I, I roll into town. And one of my friends from college texts me, Amanda Burchell, and she goes, hey, uh, are you in Duluth? And I'm like, does this girl have a tracker? I was going to say, how did she know? I oh. I saw your dad at the at the Pier B, and I'm like, he's supposed to be in Virginia, not Minnesota. So then my spidey senses are really going off. I'm panicking. I go to a boutique that morning trying to find something to wear. I had no clean underwear. Oh, brutal! Like everything was dirty from traveling. Justin was supposed to be up at his grandpa's land in Silver Bay, which him and my dad actually drove up there to take a picture so he could be there. That's, they went all out. Yeah. This is so elaborate and I love it. Oh my God. There were so many like inner workings to this. And then um, I go to like the brewery we always go to with my friends. And then afterwards we, we go to Pier B for my brother's work event. And um, I walk up to the rooftop deck and he proposes. And then he's like, oh, and um, turn around. And I turn around and up on another viewing platform is like a bunch of our family and friends. Stop. Yeah. Stop. And I'm they emotional. Were, they were silent. Just silent. I don't know how they kept it together. How would you not scream? I would have screamed. I wouldn't have been able to hold it together. It was crazy. So he did a, everything was so thoughtful. Yeah. And like so planned and just, it was really cool. Were you like out of body? Do you feel like? Oh, I blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I remember him being like, I, he said something where it's like, this is the place, like you said, you'd be my girlfriend. So I thought it would be the perfect place to ask you to be my wife. Oh. After that, blackout. I just remember saying, of course. Yeah, and then being like, give me, give me my ring. Put it on there. Give Put it, it on there. <laughs> Did, was he shaking? No, he was like, I don't know. He, he like got teary eyed because I was oh. crying. So I just saw him look up to stop crying. And then I just. I was, I blacked out. I don't, and then you're like, I don't remember anything I don't know. I don't until know. I was actually blacked out later. <laughs> it's kidding. I, true. I know I was going to say I got kind of hammered after mine too. So true. I feel that, but that's so freaking <laughs> yeah, cute. It was really cute. And the photos he had like, didn't he have rose petals down in the spot he or something had, like that? Well, it was so windy. So he had like one, um, floral arrangement cause he had a bunch, but they kept oh. blowing over. Oh, so he had like one out there, but it was really, it was just perfect. What like, a little cutie. Yeah. Like at the same spot, we started dating and it was just like so full circle. It is. How oh, did Jordan propose? That. Oh, I love that so much. Well, I'm so happy for you and your ring Thank is stunning. You. Jordan was, how did it start, I guess? Well, first of all, the same same thing happened to me where the convenience of all these people being in town actually did not click in my brain. Really? Because No, because my weekend was planned and I was like, hey, everybody, I can't hang out. Like, cause it's, it's, fr kind of frequent that my friends come home from mm -hmm. college and wherever. And yeah, you know, or my friends from college come home, I should say we're definitely not in college. We are graduated. We are out. We are moving, I moving wish, along with our I life. I wish I was in college. I know me too. I'm like, I wish I was partying with my friends and living literally in like a dorm again, but okay. Um, no, but we were just hanging out and I, I just realized all my friends were home and I'm like, everybody, I'm like busy on Saturday. We kept texting about it. They texted about it months prior. So I knew people were coming home. It was just like in the back of my head. Yeah. So I was like, Oh, that's not abnormal that people will be here in the summer. A lot of people come home for summer. It's not weird. Um, and the night before my girlfriend was like, let's go to, um, let's go to Maynard. It's like, let's go like hang out. And I'm like, okay, but I have a date day for my anniversary the next day. So like, I can't like go hard. Like in Maynard's, you kind of accidentally go hard because it's outside. It's on the water. Yeah. You see old people that you knew. And it's vibey. It's vibey. Yeah. I love Maynard. It's a wharf. Ugh. And some of my guy friends were there and I was sitting next to one of my girlfriends, Angela. She won't kill me for saying this. And I looked at her and I go, Jordan is just acting a little weird. And I, I don't know what it is. And I'm like, he, I think he has like a surprise for me on our anniversary tomorrow. And I looked at her and I go, what if he proposes? And she looks at me, she goes, oh no, I don't think he would. I think it'd be, it's probably a dog. I'm like, 
We have two cats. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what? And I also, out of all my friends, the most like charismatic one, she would be like, no fucking way. You really think so? Like all up and like, you know, light up in the eyes. If I oh said that, she'd be like, no way. If God. it wasn't true. And I just looked at her and I'm like, oh my God. And I looked over across the way at my buddy. He's sitting across the table and he's like this, like straight face. And I go, uh -huh. what are you looking at me like that for? And he goes, what? Nothing. I'm not looking at you. Jeez. I'm like, okay. Everyone's way too many weird. people. Everyone's being weird. Everyone's being weird. And my one friend who is absolutely hilarious was like, just, she was drink. We were drinking way too much. And she kept me like, you want another drink? I'm like, no, I have a date day tomorrow. I cannot get hammered. So I kept pretending like I was drinking. Cause I'm them like, over your shoulder. yeah, I would throw my shots over the shoulder. <laughs> I would like sip it barely and then accidentally leave it on the table. I'm like, whatever. So anyway, next day we wake up. I think we went to yoga, which is very normal for us on like a Sunday or Saturday. Yeah. Um, we got a cute coffee, which Jordan was very excited to go get because he, but this is weird for him because he's usually like, you always want your cute little coffees. He always makes fun of me. So I was like, that's nice on our anniversary day that you're just like, yeah, let's get you a cute coffee, babe. Like he's just like playing into it. Yeah. And I'm like, that's cute. So we come back here and he's like, I think let's boat to brunch. I think it'll be really fun. And I was like, okay, yeah. Where do we want to go? And he was like, why don't we just go to six Smith or something like that? And I'm like, oh, sounds good to me. Um, do I need to get ready though? Cause we'll get ready for dinner tonight. Cause we're going to Billy sushi for dinner as our like actual anniversary dinner. Okay. And I was like, okay. He's like, no, I wouldn't get ready. If I were you, I'm going to get ready later. So this is where I got a little irritated because I blow dried my sweaty ass hair from yoga and I like blow dried it down just so that I looked like fairly put together. Not yeah. great, but I was definitely sweaty and I'm just, you know, going about my business. He comes up from the lake cause he was getting the boat uncovered and stuff. And he's, I'm not joking, has like a chest sweat mark, the size of like a giant water bottle across his chest. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, you're, you're sweating a lot. And he's like, oh my God. I ran up to the boat, ran down, had to bring <laughs> stuff like whatever. And I'm like, and slams the door and I'm like, okay. We're having a high stress day. That's fine. All good. <laughs> we go down on the boat. We're chilling. I had a few, finish a few podcast things. Um, and I'm like, I'm just going to take a few minutes and post these things so that I can relax for the yeah. rest of the day. I'm not paying attention. We're zooming around the lake. He's like, I'm not hungry. Do you mind if we do a little cruise? And I was like, sure. We pull up to the spot where we had met, but I, I hadn't registered that in my head yet. And he goes, ah! can you go grab the rope on the front of the boat? And I, and I was like, oh, sure. And I walk up there and then I'm like, wait, why am I grabbing the rope? Are we anchoring? And I turned around and he was on a knee. Oh my God. That's yeah. so cute. And so he's like, this is where we met. And I think I, I blacked out and I think I kept saying, oh my God, oh my God, is this real? And, and then, cause I remember him going, yes, this is real. Like, oh my God. So yeah. And I then, love that. Yeah. It was pretty cute. Two very thoughtful thoughtful guys. I know. I'm like, they thought about it quite a bit. I love this for us. And it was also me too. And I'm like, it's very sentimental Yeah. and similar, same as like either where we met or where we dated, which yeah. I also, which I, I'm feel like in my head, I'm like, why did I not know that that was where it was going to be? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, that's, that makes so much sense. I would never have guessed he would have done it there. Surprisingly. I thought it was going to be like on a rooftop in LA. Yeah. Cause I had had like some hints where I was like, yeah, like I, I don't know, like a, a proposal like in the forest with a bunch of candles would be cool. Ooh. And he's like, well, that's not going to happen. Oh. And so then I was like, okay, well, like LA rooftop, but it like was so perfect. Like that full circle, yours was a full circle. Yeah. That's really, really cute. I think boys, if you're listening, if you can make it full circle, it means way more than anything elaborate. Yeah. My rule is I didn't want anyone there watching. Mm. Like that was my one thing I dropped a hint prior. I'm just yeah. weird. I just, I, I wanted the moment to be ours. Yeah. So I, that was my one rule. When we drove back to the house, then there was people there waiting. Yeah. So it was like, it was a whole party waiting to happen, which was, I can't even believe everyone put that together in like oh two my minutes. Gosh. We were gone for only like 25 minutes and they That's threw crazy. together a whole engagement party. Yeah. That's amazing. Don't know how they did it. That's absolutely amazing. Hey, little poop nuggets. It's Candid Self. I miss you guys so much. Seriously, my poop stories just don't hit the same without you. And we know change sucks and we know it's risky, but the biggest mistake you can make is being afraid you're going to make a mistake. So we honestly just trusted our gut 
on this one. And we miss you. Straight Candid misses you. I miss you. So with all that being said, I want to share with you guys my new um, adventures. You can follow my new YouTube channel. Um, you can type in my full name, Sophie Van Sirksum, or you can check the link in my bio to subscribe to my YouTube. And any support matters right now, seriously, because I'm currently at like negative 10 subscribers. So I would love a little support. But yeah, I plan to make some shorter form lifestyle content like vlogs, some fitness content sponsored by the Basil by Soph brand, um, and also some long form content where we can kind of chit chat and we can hang out throughout the day too. So I'm excited. I hope you guys support and follow, but yeah, at Candid Soph on all platforms for the time being and Sophie Van Sirksum on YouTube. But with all that, get back to it soon. <laughs> She's just popping in. Bye guys. I got a few write-ins when I said we were going to have this conversation mm -hmm. about engagements and all these things. And a few of the write-ins before we get into like engagement fails and all these fun things were, how do you have the conversation to start talking about marriage? Or like, how did the conversations go talking about marriage prior to getting engaged? It can be really stressful. I don't know for you if it was, but I think you get to a certain point where you're like, okay, it's been three years. Okay. It's been four years. Um, are we on the same page? And <clears throat> a bunch of people have asked, like, does it feel different being engaged? Like, oh, how does it feel? And I'm like, honestly, it just feels like very zen and like, like truly like you have like a safe space. And this sounds weird because it's like, OK, well, he tells you he loves you. He's shown it mm -hmm. over the course of your relationship. But I think getting engaged to me felt like I could finally read his mind. Like, I know you say you love me and I feel like we have a pretty secure attachment, but like okay, now it's like, it's definitely reciprocated. Like I, I know you mean what you say. I love that. Yeah. So it's a tough convo. I think just like as open communication as you can and just being like, I see a future with you. Where do you see this going? You know, I'd like to be engaged in, you know, maybe two years or so. What do you see for yourself? And just really just talk it out and try not to get upset because I That's think- That's the part. Yeah. Because I remember like, I think year, year four, our four year anniversary, I was like, okay, well, like, is it going to happen? Like, and if you feel like it's not going to happen soon, then like, does that say something like about us that like, maybe we should address like me overthinking everything. Oh, I know. And so it's just like, you got to give them the time and not have them feel so pressured too, because then it has the opposite effect. So it's just really open communication, open communication for sure. And the, the not getting angry part is the part that you can't like, yeah, it just puts a negative connotation on this little beautiful thing that you're wanting so bad. Mm -hmm. But when we care about something, sometimes we get so worked up about it and we get bothered because we can't understand or read the other person's mind. I feel like you got to just have open conversations about where you see yourself in a few years. That's how I started having the conversation was like, where do you see yourself in five years or three years? Like, what do you see? And it was pretty cute because one time he finally like admitted, like, I can't see my life without you anymore, which is pretty cool. Oh. And then you just know, <laughs> like, it's these tiny little nuggets or I almost said nougats. It's <clears> kind of <throat> more fun to say um, of like, oh, you feel how I feel or mm -hmm. like you under, you know, you understand what mine's my mind's thinking. And now we're like really on the same page. Yeah. So that was kind of how I felt like we started talking about it. And then. I honestly, once I felt comfortable enough and you know how close you are, mm -hmm. Jordan's a little different because he's a, just a hair or, older than me. So I knew that there might be some shifts in like when he wants to get married versus when I would like envision myself getting married, um, air quotes, because it's just, it's all like yeah. hoopla. It's like, it doesn't actually matter at all. Um, but he, I think I brought it up to him. I'm like, when do you, when do you want to get married? I'm like, just be honest with me. Cause we live together at this point. You need yeah. to have confidence in your relationship. Like we're living together in a house. Like that's pretty legit. Um, and he was like, I, I think I would want to get married by the end of 2025 at the latest. And so me in 2023, I'm like, it takes a year to plan a wedding. <laughs> it takes a year to plan a wedding. Holy shit. Oh my. And then I started spir spiraling. I'm like, oh my God, he wants to get married tomorrow. It's probably tomorrow. Like it's, oh my he's going to propose maybe tomorrow, next week. And then I spiraled for probably like three months of just like, it's happening. Am I ready? Oh my God. I would sit down with my girlfriends. I remember at like a lunch or I think we we're at dinner. It doesn't really matter. And one of my girlfriends had just gotten engaged. And then I'm sitting there. They go, when do you want to get engaged? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe next year, because I just don't want to like steal anybody's thunder. Like mm -hmm. I don't want it to come right after somebody else. And they all were like, stop. No, are you, are you being serious? And they freaked out because I was getting engaged in like two weeks. Oh, and they knew. Oh my gosh. And they knew the whole time. They did a good job not saying 
too much. Some people did. My sister, if you're listening, Taylor, she was oh, a no. cracker. I'm like, you are, her mind was just like, you could just see it spinning and spinning. And she's like, I can't see anything. Stop asking me questions. Like she'd just have a freak out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, Taylor, you're way too obvious. This is bad. This is so poor bad. thing. Just panicking. I know. But people wrote in some really good pieces of advice for like people getting engaged or like making that serious step. And I just wanted to read a few of them because they were so good. There's some speed ones and then there's some longer ones that I wanted to read. So the first one I'm looking for her name in here right here. Okay. So she said, there's a famous quote that basically says there's going to be days where you don't feel like loving each other and you might need each other not even like each other, sorry, but marriage means you have to choose to love um, each other and deliberately make the choice even when you don't feel like it in quotes, which I felt like was so true. Mm -hmm. Um, She also says, I heard something that is so true. The person you marry isn't the person you're spending the rest of your life with. People change and evolve and you're both going to become different versions of yourself throughout your life. And you can explore or you can't compare someone to who they are X number of years ago. You have to embrace your changes and love each other through it all which I think is so true. That is such a good point. I know. And she's, oh my God, she had one more. I, I liked this one because I, I read it and I thought this was like the cutest thing ever. And I also, I don't know how I feel about it right now, but I'd like to hear your opinion on it. Um, my grandparents had the happiest and longest marriage and I never understood why they had separate bathrooms until I got married, LOL. But now I get it. They even <laughs> made it their own space by decorating it that the way that they wanted to. So my grandma had pink wallpaper and pink tile and it was super bright and fun. And my grandpa's was like dark wood and plaid accents and manly. Just something to think about. Um, if possible, sometimes separate bathrooms are an extra helpful marriage tool. I could see that. Honestly, Justin and I both have stomach problems. Oh, brutal. So, you know, having your own bathroom does come in clutch for things like that. But yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people that think like even your separate rooms, we have separate duvet covers. And oh, I you think, do. I think that is the key to happy, happy life. Because we do fight quite often about him pulling the covers and it drives me bananas. It is actually life changing. It's, it's something they do in like Sweden. You have your own, oh. your own comforter. Each person has their own comforter. The number one sleep disruptor is not being able to regulate your temperature. And so if you're sharing a cover with another person, they might be warmer than you and they heat you up and then wake you up. So having so much sense, having your own blanket, you never get it pulled off of you. You don't wake up from that. You temperature regulate better. It is life changing. It's life so changing. Much sense. I and actually understand. Yeah. It now. Get, get your own comforter. I'm buying a comforter on Amazon literally right as we it, finish this episode. It is magical. No. This write in says Brene Brown has a video of these, to- uh, of this topic, but it has been something that has always stuck with me. Marriage is never 50, 50. There will be times where your partner is giving their best, which for instance could be 40%. And it's up to you to put up that extra 60 or, oh my gosh, well the wrong math here, but as 60% to make things work. And it continuously flips in cycles. Although I'm not married nor engaged yet. This is something my boyfriend and I practice regularly to help us continue our healthy and happy relationship. I think that is so important to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that I always say to Justin is like, we're both going to have different seasons. There's going to be a season where I need more support and like we need to be there for my family a little more. Mm -hmm. And your family is going to have a season too. And it's just got to ebb and flow. Like things don't have to be 50-50 because we both are from here, but we live in LA. So coming home and trying to see family and split things and make it fair it's not always possible. No. So it's like everyone has these seasons and you got to support as needed. I can understand that too with like holidays and stuff. Oh my it's been, God. I know. And we do our best yeah. and thank God both my mom and Jordan's mom are flexible. Yeah. But I can only imagine having like the helicopter moms on one side and then the other family who gets the like, you know, short end of the stick every single holiday. That would be and tough. And I've seen that even with like extended family members and different people that I just, I'm around sometimes. And I'm like, well, where is X or where is so-and-so? And And they're like at the other side Uh, again. I'm like, okay, well this is, does not, not that it needs to feel fair, but there has to be some sort of balance. Mm -hmm. And especially when you can tell it's hurting somebody's feelings, like an aunt, an uncle, a cousin. And you're like, oh God, this is, this is awkward, but you can't say anything because it's not your life and not, not your situation to be involved in. No, I had a friend who her ex, um, I think they were together four years before he made a trip to where she was from to visit family for the holidays. Where was she from? Overseas? Minnesota. 
<laughs> so it's like, okay, come on. Like there's gotta be some effort. And she went to every holiday, every birthday there. And it's like, where's the reciprocation? I don't know if I like that. I don't know if that's for four years. I haven't even been dating Jordan for four years. It was, it was quite some time. Brutal. That's brutal. Yeah. Holy crap. There are so many people that have written in about advice for somebody who is getting engaged or married. And I'm just going to read a handful that like stick out to me in here. So this one says, learn how to fight fair, prioritize the marriage and not the kids. It's you two versus the problem, not you versus the other person. I love that one. That's a really good one. And it said, don't ever let roommate issues become marriage issues. Um, This one says, go to bed angry and wait. When you wake up, you'll have forgotten why you were mad. Not always, (laughs) not always, but sometimes for sure. Um, Communication is everything. Don't let things build up and explode. Be honest and respectful. This one I am like a preacher to the choir about, but never stop dating each other and learning about each other. You both grow and evolve so much. I'm like, oh yeah. Quality time is definitely key. And it's like not you guys working side by side. Cause I do a lot of that with Justin. Mm-hmm. It's actually intentional quality time. And that can be so simple. Trader Joe's and a park bench. Oh my God. Yeah. Like it can be so simple, but it needs to be intentional. And it can't be like on your phone partially or no. like dinner on your phone, you know, and you're, or like you're distracted by the TV. It's not quality time. No, you're not like enjoying each other's company. You've got your mind can only focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. So you're really not spending time with that person. If you're doing that. Um, this one says peace is more important than being right. I totally agree with that. Um, hire a house cleaner it eliminates 90% of fights. Um, if you are able to, obviously, I don't think everybody's able to do that. Your partner is not supposed to read your mind. If something bothers you, talk about it. Yeah, it's hard to remember that he's not psychic sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> Words can be apologized for, but never unheard. So always think before you speak and speak responsibly, which I agree. Cause I always like, I remember using little pieces of like a fight in past relationships because I was like, they said this about me. Like they thought it, like it came to their mind when they, when we were fighting, like they think that about me. Yeah. Oh, that would bug me. Um, <laughs> Okay. I've read, not read through all these cause they're rolling in still. And Jordan, my fiance is in here and he says, <laughs> buy him golf clubs. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Jordan, you are so funny. This one says, what's something you find completely corny and don't want to um, do at your wedding? Oh, that's a question. Hey, Hey, no questions in the, in the answer box people. Hey, <laughs> watch it. Um, okay. One more. I'm looking for a cute one. Pick your battles. And sometimes you have to secretly buy the ice cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. There's so many good ones in here. You guys, I'll post a ton more the week of this episode drop. Cause they're so good. Like th- there's so many different ones that I just don't, we don't have time to read them all, but I want to talk about, because I think this is just so much it's, it's fun. I, I feel bad when it's sad, but like engagement fails and like weird engagement stories, weird yeah. engagement situations, like all of the above. There was a few that were wrote, written in. I think an engagement fail. My friend even written, wrote this in. She was like, I got you too drunk before um, your engagement party. And oh I'm like, God. God damn it. I'm like, don't be pushing liquor on me when you know, I've got an event the next day. What did she say she did that for? Like, what was her she was, excuse? I think she was just, <laughs> she was nervous. So she was like overcompensating. Get and her like, drunk. So yeah, she get, quits asking questions. Yeah, yep. Um, Cause she knew I was like starting to catch on. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, you mother effer. I swear to God. Oh, yeah. oh my Lord. This one is from Let's see, Dina. Let's see, where are you? I literally have to scroll, you guys, because there's so many write-ins that I screenshot everything. Here it is. Okay, engagement gone wrong. We went to a cabin. My friends were going to get engaged. My friend and fiance were setting everything up when I was distracting my friend. I then went outside to where the Will You Marry Me sign was. We see, then start walking down the stairs. And all of a the sudden, they stopped me there and there was yelling. My fiance and I ran into the house only for her to find out that the carpet was set on fire by the candles we set up to do the engagement party. You cannot trust boys sometimes stupid, LOL. She did say yes, but we lost the deposit on the house because it smelled like burnt carpet. They were married now for two years. Oh my God. So basically they set up this little scene yeah. and they lit candles. The boys were doing the candles. The girl were, they were distracting their friends. It sounds like, and someone knocked a candle over and it started the, the house fire. The whole house almost got taken out. Yeah. I don't Ooh. think you're going to get your deposit back if, if that happens. No, <laughs> that is wild. Um, 
There were so many fun ones. There's like little blurt ones. I'm going to read a few of these because I just think they're fun. This one says a friend of mine got engaged without knowing they were distant cousins. Stop. I have not read all of these. You guys like these are rolling in as we speak. Stop. How do they find out ancestry? I don't know. A DNA kit? I hope not. Oh. My cousin's now ex-husband proposed at her brother's wedding unexpectedly. Oh. Cringe. Don't. You can't be doing no, that. No, don't steal someone else's thunder. You cannot be doing that. This one says, mine was awful. Too long to type here. So she said, oh, she said, he asked with a plain band. Oh, plain like um, a plain banner banner or a plain band like no no diamond maybe oh god because both what, are that's, terrible i don't know i i have no idea but i want to hear more so dm me because i want to know this one says i was working in a restaurant and she ran away when he proposed Aww. jesus you guys these are sad some of these are sad oh, man. um said yes after leaving him waiting for 20 minutes because i wanted to say no left six months later Oh, brutal. Oh, didn't trust your gut there. Yeah. You have to listen to your gut, my friends. Like, and here's my thing and my advice for you. If you're like, I'm unsure if I want to marry this person, you should probably get out because if they're getting closer and closer to the date, you're going to freak yourself out. It's even worse when you have to say no when they're down on a knee. It's even worse when you've got to do it at the altar. And then even after that, it's even worse when you got to do it after you are already married. I feel like the, the anxiety just like like feeling that. Oh, it's crippling inside of me. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I'll do a few more. This one says got married, but his mom flipped out and we didn't send the paperwork in. So they called it off. What did she do? I don't know. Mother-in-laws get so interesting around weddings. Like the amount of stories I've read where mother-in-laws have worn white, like white, white, white wedding dresses To to their son or daughter's wedding goofballs you guys i have been to a wedding i'm not going to no. give any context oh, at no. all you any saw context. it you saw it in person this was the mother of the bride i remember she acted like it was her day no no it's like gross it was the weirdest like the the rehearsal dinner was just I don't even know how to explain it without like giving too much away, but she was like standing up doing a speech. She was talking very like, you know, elaborately. I am the mother of the bride, you know? And she had like the most sparkly loud dress I've ever seen in my whole life. And then the wedding day when the mom like walked down the aisle with them, like I think it was right before them, the, the last person before them. And she was like, in a light colored, but dazzled dress. It was kind of, I'm not going to lie. It was overstated. It overstated the bride's dress. If I'm being totally honest. And she was like stopping for photos and like, just like the most like over the top thing. She was stopping for photos as she was walking down the aisle to go to her seat. Yes. Hell no. Yes. No, this is, this is actually real. And then when it came to like the speeches and, or like they did a few speeches while they were up at the, you know, altar. Um, and she was like, doing this over said and overdone laugh, like, you know, like, <laughs> like acting like everybody's looking at her. Oh my God. And at that point I am looking at you because it was just so uncomfortable. You're not the star of the show today. Holy. This is why I'm going to have a day of coordinator. And if there's anyone that's stepping out of line, they are getting asked to leave, leave. No, literally. like this is not your day. And I'm going to have cool shit like a camel at my wedding. Oh my God, so shut up. Don't try to fuck my shit up. Don't fuck her shit up. Yeah. And not, don't touch her camel. Okay. I'm so excited about the camel. Wait, is that real? Yeah. You're going to have a camel. Yeah. My mom's friend has a camel. She's She owes a petting zoo. You're so joking. I'm going to have a camel at my wedding. That's so, so well, people are going to ride it around? I don't know if you can ride it. Or just like have it kind Feed of there? Feed it carrots <gasps> is my goal. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. You'll see it. Wait, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll see it. <sighs> oh my God. This is going to just be so much fun. I can't wait. Okay. This one says, my friend was going to break up with her boyfriend and he surprised her by posing, proposing in front of his family. And she said yes, because she was so embarrassed. Then the next day broke it off. Ooh. See, here's the thing. I would probably, (sighs) I would probably do that too, though. Like if it was someone that I, I, you know, you love them, you care about them. You don't want to hurt their feelings. I feel like that might be better than just like saying no, especially if it's in front of other people. Oh God. That's why it is like, it is nice in that sense, like an intimate only you guys proposal because then you can say no. 
or yeah, feel I, like you can say no. I know, but like, good Lord, by the time they're engaging, you don't want to be like, oh, I, I want the opportunity to say no. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you, what happened up until this point where one party thinks all is well in the world and they're going to get engaged? Like, it, that just doesn't like yeah. fathom. My mind does not like make sense of that. No, and I, I've seen a lot of guys talking about proposing. And it's like, you don't propose unless you know the answer is going to be yes. Yeah. So that disconnect is really interesting. It tells a much larger story, my friends. But that I think is like a lot of women are, you know, I think they like emotionally check out first yeah. before they physically leave. Yeah. And so it's hard. That is really hard. There's, relationships are so complex. They are. This one was about, it was a question and it says, what do you do when you hate your engagement ring? And I thought this one was like a perfect little topic to talk about because- uh, I have heard of people getting engaged and hating so their many. ring. And I'm trying to think of how I would handle the situation. Luckily, I like, I love my ring. Mm-hmm. I think it's amazing, but I will tell you this right now. It is the exact opposite of what I asked for, looked at, tried on. No, <laughs> no, I'm not joking. It is not. How did, okay. Well, being in that situation, when you get something that you're like, immediately you would have been like, this is not what I want. How did you get over that? Because in the moment it was so special that seeing the real thing that was for me that he planned it, nothing mattered. It literally removed every thought of what I like would have wanted. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. He made this ring. So like nothing else matters. Like I couldn't give two shits what it looked like. And it is gorgeous. Like it's it's not, it's not ugly. Um, but it's like, I don't care anymore. He made it. He like went for months, like in back in like February. And we got engaged in July like, and made it with someone and like went in multiple times. And like, even just hearing part of that, I was like, oh my God, nope, done. I, I think that's the most beautiful thing in the world. And now it's just everything. The thought and energy behind that is really cool. Honestly, I did read a story where, um, I think it was a listener write in on the two hot takes subreddit, but it was them writing in being like, I hate my engagement ring. It hurts my finger. It breaks all the time. Like breaks, like the prongs come loose. Like it was just not what they wanted at all. And she was like, what do I do? Like, what do I do? And everyone was like, just tell him seriously. Yeah. Just tell him it's going to be okay. And she went, confronted him. Hey, I don't really like my ring. And he was like, you know, I don't really like it either. Let's get you something else. Oh, I thought you would like it. My mom said that you should get this ring. It's kind of similar to hers, you know? And so I didn't, I didn't believe what you had told me. So I trusted my mom and then it all worked out. She got a new ring, but honestly, like I think engagement rings are something you can have like the, the icing, like the big rock versus the wedding band. I think you can have multiple of them. I think you can too. Victoria Beckham's got 15. 15? Yeah. And one of them is worth like a million dollars. Okay. Well, which we're not all Victoria Beckham, like no. Posh Spice. No one is Posh Spice, but I think we can all have multiple. I mean, if you get, if you're wealthy enough, for sure. Like if you can afford it, for sure. Yeah. I think it doesn't I, have to be a lot either. No, you can do a little fun, tiny thing in the gift. I think it's cute. Yeah. Like, I think if I, you know, when we hit like a 10 year anniversary, it'd be fun to get a new band or something mm-hmm. to like add on to it or stack them like yep, for push, like 10 years push or present, something. Band. Yep. We're getting push presents. Oh yeah. Please. I'm ch- carrying your child and eating for two for nine months, which actually that's, that's kind of a good thing. So that'll be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've also seen people say like, especially like your ring is flashy and mine is like, everyone looks at it. They're like, that's pretty big. And I'm like, Okay. Okay. Yeah. Get a fake ring for when you travel. Yes. Like it can be similar to the one you have, or it can be something totally different that you don't have, but wanted to try Mm -hmm. get a fake ring for traveling. So if something happens, it gets stolen, you get pickpocketed, whatever it is, you're not sad. You lost your actual ring. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's actually a really good idea. Regardless of size, it's like you could just have a fake one because it is nerve wracking bringing anything. Like I don't bring anything of value on trips. Yeah. Just stresses me out too much. But then I get worried that someone knows that I'm not at my house and then they're going to break into my house. I don't know. I have like the most irrational fears that circulate <laughs> around my life. If you haven't noticed, we got to get you a safe anxiety. We do have a safe actually. <laughs> so I could go. use that. Pop it in I there. just don't know how to get into it. You'll I think learn. it's Jordan safe. So You'll learn. I'll learn soon. We're, we're tied, man. He's stuck with you. Give me that safe code. Huh? Let me see what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> what I would do really, really realistically in this situation is think about if it actually matters to you. Like, does it matter that I don't like my ring? Like, is it, is it more important that you might hurt their feelings or is it more important that 
they gave you something special. And like that, neither are the wrong answer. I have a friend who redid her wedding ring Mm -hmm. and she went back to what it was originally because when she got the like redid version, she felt so guilty that she couldn't do it. Oh, hell no. Yeah. I picked like mine out. We went together beforehand and that's like a fun thing too. If you're talking about getting engaged. Yeah. That can we fun. can we go look at rings together and just yeah. see like what we're both into? Like he can try on bands, mm-hmm. you can try on engagement rings and pick out what you want. And if he chooses not to listen and does something special, that's okay. Yeah, that's But fine. then you get kind of an idea. And so like we went in and like I made a fool of myself with the jeweler oh guy. God. I was like, he didn't have um any stones that were big enough. And I I got so goofy. I'm like, no, seriously, like I don't want to see my finger. I want the rock to be bigger than my finger. And I didn't go that big. It's, I can see my finger. Yeah. You're like, it's okay. Yeah. He was laughing at me, but then like you got to pick it out and I just did the loose stone. And so I didn't know what my ring was going to look like at all. I like just picked the stone and then he did the rest. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. So you can make it a fun little date night. You should also be secure enough in your relationship. If you're thinking about marriage to be able to have these conversations, like that's my biggest advice for somebody who's like, wondering how you even start talking about it. Like you should feel secure enough. hundred percent. And in previous relationships that I was in just as long as the one I'm in right now, where I'm now engaged, I couldn't have the conversation because we weren't secure. Mm -hmm. So like, think about that a little bit and like, think about what you're actually in and a part of. I know it's not easy. It's not like a day and you're going to figure it out, but really truly think about what you need and what you want. Because if you need to get out, it's now or never sister, like do it now because you can you're going to trail it on and you're going to exaggerate the situation. You might hang out with somebody who who maybe is not your fit or your person and you wait and you stay too long. And all of a sudden, yeah, you got kids and you're like, shit, I should have left. Yeah. I think that's like a lot of us get caught in that sunken cost fallacy. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're engaged and you, you know, have your wedding planned and you're not going to get deposits back. Like that is easier to call off than going through a divorce. Yeah, like exactly. If, if it doesn't feel right, it's okay to call it. It's okay to call it. Like you can call it, yeah. my friends. I want to talk about some wedding planning fiascos and I want to ta- start with a oh gosh, big one that I, I read and I was like, this, this scares me quite a bit. I'm just going to read it to you, give you no context. Okay. So my wedding planner sent me a vendor list for limos. One of them ended up being for an escort agency to rent specifically Asian escorts oh my posing God. as a limo rental company. When what? I contacted my wedding planner, she said it was a nice husband and wife who owned the company and she had no clue that they did that. I totally called the sex trafficking hotline and reported the website, but still a little funny that my planner was recommending them. Stop. <laughs> I would have a meltdown. You're on the phone and you're like, Oh God. Like literally I feel like my phone by then is tapped. Like I'm getting fired from my job for just calling the number. Like what? How did she know though? What what were they asking? Like what, like what kind of girl would you want? Like how do you, how do you get to that point to like, what were they asking to give her that idea? Who gave the wedding planner the recommendation? Who said, yeah, use these guys. They're great. Honestly, wedding planner just seems like they didn't do their research. Well, that or that's something scary, which I I have no idea which one it is, but oh I, I literally couldn't believe that one when I read it. I'm like, this is, this is disturbing. That's so, a little horrifying. It's a little horrifying. It's a little spooky, a little crazy. Um, this one says, this one's a little bit longer, but I think it'll be fun. Um, I found out the week of my wedding, my sister would not be at my wedding. Her husband was in basic training in another state and she wasn't supposed to go see him until the week of after my wedding. She decided to go early and miss my wedding. Why? Her daughter, my niece was supposed to be my flower girl. Since she wouldn't be there, I decided I would not have a flower girl as I had no other nieces to fill the role. My now husband's sister-in-law, my brother's wife had two girls Um, that on the morning of my wedding, she presented to me as I was trying to get dressed and said, here you go, pick one. And I told her I would talk to her later (laughs) about it, but I would not be picking one until trying to get, trying to get dressed. Um, we got married in 2013 and we were pretty broke. So my mom hired a friend's daughter to take pictures during the wedding. She did it for free. I found out later and all of our pictures were either completely out of range or out of focus. No, I know. I'm not. (laughs) I just got to laugh. I'm like, oh my God. Shutterfly couldn't print all the photos due to the quality being so low. So I have no wedding photos to this day. No. My father-in-law volunteered to make my cake saying he would make whatever I wanted. Just send a picture. 
No. I showed him a photo of a very simple cake with two layers and it looked like <laughs> it looked like it had been brushed with some gold, um, but was mostly just a white cake. When we arrived to the reception, he had with what I would describe as a birthday cake as esque piping on multiple cakes connected together with little pr- plastic stairs and a plastic fountain in the middle. Looked like maybe he bought like a, a kit of some sorts. Oh my God. Do we have a picture? No, I literally, there's I no need a photos. picture of this cake. I know. I'm like, this is so annoying to be honest. All of this seemed like a big deal at the time. And I always say, if I knew then what I would, what I know now we would have eloped and had a big party after, but in the end we did what we um, set out to do. We got married. We've been married for 10 years <laughs> together for 14 and he's my best friend. That's really, that's a kind of an amazing story because holy shit did stuff go wrong. I have anxiety. <laughs> if, if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. It went wrong, sister. But hearing like, okay, none of that matters. Here we are 10 years later, happily married. Like that's what matters. The whole like canceling last minute thing is just like too much for me. I'd be overwhelmed for sure. The the cake, I think I probably would have thought it was pretty funny because I'm like, whatever the photos, the photos, I'd be pissed. That would be, you can't duplicate that day. No. And think about it. 2013, I, th- I for sure had a phone, but the quality was not as good. You had a camera on your phone. It was yeah, iPhone. It was I was iPhone. in high school. Um, but no, the quality was crap. It wasn't the greatest, but God, like if anyone doesn't have a photographer, like, and it's nearby me, like I will take your pictures. I took some fire engagement pictures for my friend. Like beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So God, don't, that's just, oh, grab a friend or grab, I don't know, grab somebody. But what's wrong with your sister, your own family? Like I get, that's bad. I get like, you know, he's getting done with the basic and you, that's a long stretch to not see your partner, but like. This is also know, your sister's wedding. Yeah, I just wait a week. You've already waited probably quite a bit of time. Yeah, like, just, wait another week. It's goofy. It's very goofy. Ugh. This one says, at my sister-in-law's wedding, so many things went wrong. Firstly, um, her nana got drunk and started shouting about how bored she was during the father of the bride speech, and then Ooh. she passed out. <laughs> one of the bridesmaids was given a dessert with nuts in it, despite disclosing her allergy, and ended up in the ambulance um, to a hospital after three shots of an EpiPen did Stop. nothing. Oh. Oh God, she almost died. Yep. Then her mother also got so drunk that she also passed out and had to be taken home, missing the first dance and the cake cutting. Was an absolute nightmare. I don't know how she kept her cool. I would have lost my mind. There are just some people that should not have alcohol. This is scaring me for like things that could go wrong. And and I know that none of this will happen. Like I know for a fact I'm I'm gonna be okay. Oh no, mine's gonna be a shit show. But do you think so? Oh, for sure. 100%. 100%. You sure? Yeah. Hearing these is making me feel better. <laughs> yeah. I'm like- Why do you think yours is going to be shit show? You know, everyone's got a lot of family drama. I mean, I do too. It's not Stuff like- just comes out of the woodwork with alcohol. So we've even like, we're like, do we even have an open bar? And I'm like, I wish we could just give I some know. people wristbands. Like <laughs> the people that I know that can handle it. I want to give them a wristband. Here you go. You get a wristband. I, you do not. Honestly, maybe this is the play. The people that I know that can handle it get wristbands. Smart. And the people that don't get wristbands don't get open bar. That's fine. You're you're restricted. You've chosen to act a fool and you are restricted. Sorry about it. Can you imagine how many people are going to be like, you didn't give me a wristband. Oh my God. Whatever. People are fine. They need to relax. I know. Um, A few of these funny ones. These are quick ones from Instagram that people wrote in. Some of those other ones were DMs. Um, It says... Uh, COVID had to change my venues five or excuse me, change my venue five days before. Ooh. Yeah. Had my cousin accuse me of planning my wedding when my baby was due. So she couldn't go when her baby was, her baby was due. She meant, um, was in a wedding that was canceled four days before because of a forest fire. Oh my God. Um, this one says I had to find a new dress three months before my wedding because the designer ghosted and the bridal store and my dress new dress came in two days before the wedding. So she was ghosted by them. Wow. This one says wedding planner decided to surprise me with a pink floor of my dance floor the day of the wedding. Ooh. mm -mm. I would have had a freak out. Um, Unless you want bright pink. Oh my God. Oh no. (laughs) My grandma wanted to wear her wedding dress to my wedding. (laughs) Honestly, if she still fits in that, that's kind of a flex. Oh my God. I just can't with these people. It's like, that's, it is a flex, but I mean, grandma, not your moment, not your shining moment. 
I asked my grandma, I was like, grandma, do you still have your dress? Cause I was like, I would love to like take it and like revamp it for like a rehearsal dinner. Yeah. She doesn't have it. She borrowed oh. one. She didn't have money for a dress. So she borrowed oh my God, one. That's, oh, that I makes know. my heart hurt. It's just so, so innocent and beautiful. I know. Because so, it, oh, just talking to your parents, you hear about all their like all the things that they went through yeah. and the struggles and like the grind that they had to go through and the corners they cut and they'd had the most beautiful, perfect day. And they'd never tell you those things overtly. I, know. I don't know. Um, okay. This one says my tailor spilled coffee all over my wedding dress and we had to buy a brand new one two weeks before. No, shut up. Yep. Um, this one was make sure your dress is actually ready. Seven alterations for the simplest dress. And I got it the night before my wedding. Nope. Panic attack. Yep. Panic attack. I am literally peeing my pants. My best friend's mother-in-law and my husband's brother dated and then broke up during the planning. Nice. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Family drama. Love it. And then adding a little layer of we were dating. I can't even believe that. This one says I got married during 2020 and my officiant dropped out the week before my wedding. Um, that sucks. My mom, without asking me, got me a custom wedding dress made. And I think it's extremely ugly. <laughs> Yeah. I, that's really hard to do. Like we, after we got engaged, like kind of already had our engagement party. Like that was the engagement party. And my mom was like, we're going to throw you an engagement party. And I'm like, no, we're not. We don't need to do that. We had one. So I get like parents that want to be so involved and they're so excited and they could have the best intentions, but you got to draw the boundaries. You got to draw a boundary. It's not, you can't do it any other way. No. Okay. I'll do like a two more. Um, this one says my mother decided she didn't like my venue anymore. So not only did she break the contract with my current venue, but she also moved my wedding to a different state. Shut the fuck up. You guys, you're not my mom anymore. You're no. not my mom anymore. Call this the is venue. insane. Hey, why did you authorize a cancellation based on my mom calling you? I'm not 18. Did you talk to me? Did you talk to my, my fiance? No. Oh God. Okay. Well that date, it better come back. Oh my God. Invitations have gone out. Crazy lady. Oh my God. This girl said my mother-in-law ruined my micro ceremony. I, I sent you the full story in the DMS and I just was scrolling to it and it's kind of long, but why don't we just read it and see what we it's got It's going to be here. spicy. My wedding planning fiasco. My husband proposed over Christmas time a few years ago. It was cute. He had the whole family over to watch. I had no idea it was happening and it was perfect. Fast forward to springtime and we get the news that my husband will be deployed earlier than expected. We decided last minute to get married before he was to leave and have a large formal ceremony once he was home. Wedding planning begins and him and I agree that we want a micro ceremony in our backyard. We both agree on 10 of our closest family and friends. Once I told my parents, they flipped. I couldn't invite one cousin and not the other or one aunt and not the uncle. So we compromised and only invited the family that was closest to us on the family side. We told my mother-in-law and picked out 30 people from her side of the family. My parents rented a tent. My mother-in-law offered to pay um, for the food, 60 people total. As a few weeks go by, every so often, my mother-in-law would say, I invited so-and-so to the wedding. It got to the point that my mother and I started asking her how many people she had invited. Her response was, I'm handling the food. Don't worry about it. No, um, that's not <laughs> your decision to make. We didn't invite anyone from my dad's side of the family um, besides my grandma. And we were thinking that maybe 65 people would be there. Again, large for backyard wedding and nothing that my husband and I wanted. The day arrives, I watch horrified as more and more and more people arrive. No, we have a huge tent set up, but that is not enough to accommodate the sheer amount of people. When our ceremony started, I walked out to see my husband standing at our wedding tree and I looked over and I saw over 100 people. My mother-in-law had invited the entire family, including the extended. There were children running around screaming, adults drinking way too much and people walking up to me, introducing themselves. Nope. Not the time. One of the in-laws was even bothering me while I was getting zipped up in my dress. He didn't see the porta potty we had set up outside. I was furious and hurt. Our perfect day turned into an all out drunk fest with the rowdy cousins chugging whatever they could get their, um, out of their coolers that they brought. We had brought, they a brought coolers. Yep. We had brought a few cases of beer and wine. All of it was gone in a matter of hours to top it all off. At the end of the night, I decided to change out of my dress, throw something comfy on. I went looking for my husband and found him with the rowdy cousins. I was asking him to come back to the tent with me so we could finally dance together. At that moment, a woman I'd never met before looked at me and slurred, are you the bride? 
I went to bed after that. We had our second ceremony and that went fine. Leading up to it, my in-laws were awful, including my mother-in-law. They told me over and over again how we didn't need a second wedding because everyone was already at the first. Yeah, from your side, lady. My family that wasn't invited was broken to see pictures of the day when everyone was there. I would have canceled. At that point, I would have said, there is no wedding today. This is not what we wanted. We are going to a little chapel down the street and doing a 10 minute service because that's what that was about. A small, intimate little gathering so they could be officially married before he got deployed. Hell no. Someone's bothering you when you're getting zipped in your dress. Fuck off, dude. I would have had a straight up tantrum. Are you the bride? I Yeah, I am. What about it? If Who are even you? If, even if it wasn't at my wedding and someone was like, are you the right? Like hanging over my my soon-to-be husband. I would have a freaking conniption fit, let alone oh. at my wedding at my parents' backyard. I would be like, get the fuck out of here. I would not I be able to hold my it. cool. I would have literally walked out of that and oh, I would have God. said to my, my husband, fiance at the time, if you don't follow me, I'm going to take that as an answer, dude. Like if you have a problem with me leaving and us not doing this, we have a problem. Like that is so terrible. I wish I knew their conversation after the fact. Like, how did he respond to this? Did because that was yes. his side of the family. It sounds like. And I wonder if he was like, Oh yeah, no, it was fine. I mean, everyone came, it was all good. Like my mom just had the best intentions. Oh Jesus. My mom, my mom just wanted us to have a good day. Well, your mom ruined our day. Your mom, your mom is up to no fucking good. I, the last sentence that she sent was, Oh, and we ran out of food. I didn't even get to taste my wedding cake cupcakes and my backyard was trash. Hell no. I would have left. It's canceled. Done. Done. I am so sorry, <laughs> my girl. I, I feel terrible for you. I don't think that if anyone's family behaved like that, you have full right to cut them out. Yeah. Imagine being at Christmas then hanging out with the fam, like being like, oh yeah, remember your wedding? <laughs> no, I don't. Cause I was too fucked up. Like I cannot. I would have a lot of resentment. I think that's like a thing too. It's, I have gone through this process of like making decisions now on like, what's going to leave me with the least resentment. And that's like, I don't know if that's healthy, but I think when you're in these situations and you're like, is it better if I just go with this and not say anything? Or do I tell my mother-in-law and walk out? What's going to make you feel the best? This is supposed to be your special moment. So what's going to leave you with the least amount of resentment? Because you have to live with these people every day going forward. This is one day what is going to be the best for you every day after? Even if you're dealing with somebody who is really reactionary, like, and reactive to anything that you say, you have to be an adult and just like bite your tongue and just say, I need you to back off of our wedding planning in the kindest way, because if not, I'm going to resent you. And I, I feel like you're taking control of a day that is ours. And I hope that you can understand that. And they might be salty and they may do whatever, but at least they didn't ruin your shit. You got to deal with the the dynamics of the families because that's tough and they're they're inevitable in most cases, but I would speak your word. I would not let people go through with touching your stuff. No, no. fucking way. Mm -mm. And don't let no. people pay for things if you know they're going to hold it over your head. Yeah, no. If you know that your your mom, dad, mother-in-law, stepdad, whoever it is, if you already know that they use money to gain control over situations, oh, I'll pay for the food. Don't worry about it. I'm paying for the food. I get to invite my 20 extra guests. Don't let those people pay for the food. No. Unless you're okay swallowing and dealing with whatever happens because of that. Most people I would say are probably going to do something in return. Some people I would say, they're just like, no, I want to do this for you. Like I love you. And I, yeah. I, but that the character is right there and painted in front of your face. Yeah, like, You're going to know you're going to know right away. Oh my God, you guys, I am so sorry <laughs> for a lot of you that like, it gives me, it gives me sad anxiety. I posted this last night a recording this morning, like less than 12 hours later and I have like hundreds and hundreds of people, like everybody's going through something with their situations. I kind of love that though. I know. It's giving like, we're all in this together. We like, I haven't seen the movie in a while. <laughs> and I see it. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's, it is true. It's like, we're, we all have our stuff. I don't know if I know one person that has had a flawless, everything went off without a hitch wedding day. There's always going to be something. It will. There always will be. And my to, camel could run away. Oh my God. And your camel's going to be running around, my running camel, around the city. My, my camel could get loose. In Duluth. It's, you see a camel in Duluth, people. A seal broke out of the zoo there once. 
Yeah. How did that happen? Back in the Duluth 2012 <laughs> flood. It, oh. The, the zoo flooded and it overflowed the seal tank and it went swimming through the streets. Kind of fun for him though. Good for him. Yeah. He's chilling. He looked really scared in the pictures. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah. But oh, I feel bad. My, my camel will be safely corralled. So he will. We, we should be okay. You're going to be fine. It's Wait, be when fine. are you going to get married? Oh, that's a great question. Okay. That's the question I keep getting from everyone. My grandma, literally, I put the ring on and my grandma comes down the stairs. She goes, have you picked a date yet? I'm like, oh, so cute and no. innocent too. Well, I just like want her to be there. That's why I'm like, if my wedding, it might be 2025 because yeah. we're building a venue on our farm. Not just for my wedding, for other people's too. Yeah. But um, it might be a little later. So then I'm kind of like, maybe we just get married next year. So like Aww. my grandma for sure can be there. I know. I know. Just like, or tomorrow. I'm, I don't care. Whenever it is. Whenever. I know. So she can be there. I yeah. know. That's my one vote is I wish my grandma could be there. Yeah. Because I lost her only a year ago. Yeah. Which we, would, we didn't see coming. It's not like we no. could have planned for it. it. It wouldn't have been the right time. But it's sad. That's like the saddest part of it is yeah. thinking about her not being there. You know, it's, it's tough. Like, oh God. Like, and everyone has one of those people. Like oh, yeah. I wish so-and-so could be here. Like it's, it's hard. hard. It's really hard. I know. And you think about your list and you like, I almost like nonchalantly, chalantly wrote her name down. Oh, you I should do like, a little oh, table though. I will. Or I'm like a to. seat, a picture. Like I love when people do like the wish they could be here. And then yeah. it's like a little, like a couple photos. Like Jordan's grandpa also passed away about a little bit before my grandma and they were very close too. So I think we'll have like a little that's, yeah. tribute to those two. That would be really nice. I don't know. I just think that's beautiful. You can still include people on your special day like that. I know a lot oh, of yeah. people have like lost their dads and they don't get their dad to walk them down the aisle. And so yeah. that's really a s just tragic reminder for them on their wedding day. But I know. there's ways to still include your loved ones who can't make it. Yeah, I think so too. I, uh, yeah, I, I think it's just going to take a little thought. Once we get closer in details, I'll start laying all those pieces out, but I'm the same. Date? No, 2025. <laughs> I don't know. We're like, who cares? Whatever. <laughs> Where people are like, who cares? I'm like, no, not like that. I just no, mean like, like it'll, we'll figure it out. It'll come together when it's supposed to come together. Yeah. Like funds are a little tight right now. We got, we did some house updates. Like we're waiting until we have like a comfortable amount that we can put into it. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know. We're human. Um, I want to finish this episode because we could talk for nine, nine years. And as know, we I get closer, this. we might have to do another one because I know. We, have, we just have to, once we learn more and see more, um, a bridezilla's, I feel like we just haven't talked about that. <laughs> and I think we'll talk more about this when we get closer, but there's a few in here that I th just think are worth talking about. This one says got mad because I ordered Taco Bell drunk for myself and not her expected, um, to spend my entire paycheck on the bachelorette before having summer off. Sounds like she must be like a teacher, oh. um, cut her husband off and took the mic from his hands when he was crying, thanking his parents. Damn. She really doesn't like her in-laws. Yep. And then kicked me out of her bridal suite because I didn't want to pay to stay the night at the hotel. Mm, that's weird. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make sense because what are they getting ready in the bridal suite and yeah. she didn't like pay for it? Okay. Jesus. Lord. Um, this one says my wedding is seven months away yet still being called a bridezilla for having boundaries with family. Oh, sounds like you're just a sane person yeah, getting out of things. Don't even do that. This one says, am I bridezilla for asking my sister and bridesmaids to dye her hair a natural color right now? It is yes. neon orange. Yes, you are. Yes. You're a bridezilla. You Absolutely. can't do that. You can't do that. I don't think you can. I don't think so either. I think it's like really disrespectful to your friends. And it's like the bottom line is why is that person standing next to you? Because they're your friend. You should love them for who they are and what, what they her, currently are. Her hair color. If she's, if she's not going to match your aesthetic of bridesmaids, like that's kind of a reality you have to face and you shouldn't have asked her to be a bridesmaid if that was an issue for you. Yeah. Maybe it's really rude. Maybe don't do that. Like it's they're, really rude. they're themselves. That's why they're standing up with you. Like don't. I I've had, a, I've had a listener ask me this too. And I think really? the hair, I think the hair was blue instead. And I, you just like, it's tough love. I'm so sorry. This is really tough love, but it's not, you're, it's not what it's about. It just, it's not your body. What do you care about? Like, do you care about that? They're, they look like themselves or somebody else that they're clearly not like, that's just like also, weird to me. I think it's interesting. It's like, well, I don't want, you know, our pictures for, you know, her hair to be so Viol like violently colored for these pictures. The pictures that you put up, like, I don't know. I feel like they're mostly going to be of you and your husband if you display them. But like, do people really look at their wedding pictures that often anyways? No. I, I, my brother and his wife made 
everyone coffee book table, like coffee table books, whatever. They made everyone the coffee table books. I don't know where they are. I haven't are you seen joking it. me? I haven't seen it at their house. I haven't seen it at my mom's or my grandma's. So I don't, don't hurt your friendship no. for the sake of photos. No. Oh my God, Lord. I don't know, but that's just insane. My husband did most of the planning for our wedding and my mom and I called him Groomzilla, which is kind of funny. I kind of like that. This one says, uh, bride left her own bachelorette because she didn't want to go to the mountains. Hmm. Fair. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of seems weird. I've heard a story where the bridesmaid or excuse me, the bride re reminded all guests, no ponytail elastics on their wrists. I get it. I get that one. Yeah. I don't, I don't want those in photos. Like it's a black like band. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, you know what everyone has nowadays? What? The Apple watch tan. Oh my God. Would you ask people to take off their Apple watch if they're in your wedding? Um, I mean, probably just because like even if you silence something like it will go off. What if there's an alarm? Like, I don't know. And plus, like, I think a big Apple watch looks tacky. It like, does look tacky. Any of your other jewelry. I don't I don't care Wear whatever you want. But I think a big Apple watch like I'm kind of on, I'm pro like asking them to take it off. I'm not going to lie because I just would be like, I don't for know. The day. Yeah. Like, let's you, unplug. You don't need to close those loops today. You don't need to be there. It's OK. It's all good. We'll get you moving on the dance floor. Yeah, you, okay. can, you can put it back on then. <laughs> Last one, my best friend offered to pay a makeup artist to cover my very small birthmark for pics um, as her maid of honor. That would piss me off if I was and maid of honor. Person. You're you're very close. You're also, very close. It's my birthmark. Like it it is me. It's not something you should be ashamed of. Like that's bad. That's bad. That just gives me the ick. And then you have to stand up there next to them and just act like, okay, well, your day. Remember, keep smiling, keep shining. Unless it's something you wanted covered up, then like pop off. Thanks for paying for it. But like, no, that's that's really that's a slap in the face. Oh, it's a total slap in the face. I don't like that. I don't either. Oh my God, you guys. Well, this, this was very fun. I'm not going to lie. I love talking about like bridezilla situations. I love, I love engagement fails. I don't know why I love hearing them. Maybe it makes me feel more normal. It gives me less, hope. It gives me hope, <laughs> but also it worries me to no end. So I'm like, I don't know if this made me calmed or not, um, but I hope you had fun with this. Morgan, this is so much fun. I love having you on. Thank we you always have me. fun conversations. I know. Morgan's just... been such a mentor to me, you guys, like even through all of this transition. So there'll be a lot more of Morgan. I know. How does it feel being solo? Honestly, it feels refreshing. It feels like a new start. It feels like I am speaking and going the direction I want to go 100% because obviously otherwise it's 50-50 with yeah, somebody else. It's definitely. not mine. It's ours. I don't, I don't know. I feel really good. I, I feel that. really, really good. I'm so excited. Um, sorry. I will, I will be inserting myself um, here and there because I just love, love that. I love coming on here. This is so fun. I know. And we, since you're going to be coming back to Minnesota even more so much, and hopefully I can come so out to much. LA a little bit more too. I think we got to do another LA trip. I think so too. I think so. And we might do an event here. I'm not going to tell you any details other than that, but I'll let you sink, sit with that and, uh, think about it. My Minneapolis crew <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I should say Minnesota crew because Duluth is everybody all over the place. I mean, Wisconsin, you want to drive. Anywhere. Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota. You want to fly? You do your you thing. You come on in. You, you come on thing. in. Um, you guys, I'm not going to lie. At the moment that we're recording this, my handles are not changed, but you will be able to find me if you go to at Candid Sid. I promise you, you will be able to find me. The podcast just launched if you're hearing this. So um, I have not launched my changes and <laughs> some of which are not final if I'm being totally honest. So uh, follow me at Candid Sid and uh, please rate and subscribe. It always helps me. So please do that. Plug yourself, Morgan. Where can they find you? Two hot takes on everything. T W O H O T takes. Yeah, it's it's a good come time over there. there. Come mm -hmm. come check us out. It's a out. party. It's it's good. And your cute little spooky studio is from. Oh my god! Spooky Halloween season. threw up in my studio, <laughs> but it's so beautiful here in Minnesota right now. The leaves. I'm like, okay, maybe I, I maybe I don't hate spooky season. See, but. and soon you'll be in spooky season. You'll be here in Minnesota, and it's going it. to be amazing. I absolutely love it. It's well, just how magical. long until you think you move back? If you had to guess. It's going to be a minute. Yeah, I kind of figured. It's going to be a minute. You're working but, on the house. Yeah, but I'm here so much that it just, it's, I just love Minnesota. There's nothing no, like yeah. it. I talked to someone on a plane last night. She was from California, lives here now. And she's like, I was like, would you ever move back? She's like, absolutely not. Minnesota's magical. Oh, and you're like, okay, love I'm that. Like, I'm like, yeah. It is magical. I'm not going to lie. 
And after I got my little LA like tickle out of me and since I can go out there and see you and yeah. all my friends, I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm hanging out over here. Yeah. Crew, I will see you next Monday. Uh, tune in. It's the same time. 5 a.m. CST every single Monday is a new episode and I cannot wait to grace your ears next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Talk later. <laughs>